What is up everyone, Taylor Torrance here. Today I wanna to walk you through the project file for our Creepin' Remix. This is our remix of The Weeknd, 21 Savage, Metro Boomin's track Creepin'. If you haven't heard the track yet, I'll put it in the description below. Me and my friend Apollo Nash, Greg, we went hard on this. For a bootleg, we went crazy. We have four different genres in one track, so we hit techno, kind of like this, this uh, futuristic kind of techno, R&B from the original, obviously it's an R&B inspired track. We have a trap drop in there and we have a trance drop. And I wanna take you guys through all of those aspects. We're gonna dive deep into the processing. We're gonna look at everything here. It's gonna take a while. Apollo and I, we did this over Zoom predominantly. So I started this track on a Twitch stream. Apollo and I, we went back and forth on Zoom a lot. We went deep into the details there. And then he's also gonna jump into this video and show you a few of the things he did on his end outside of our Zoom sessions. But I'll, I hold the master project here, and so we will jump in, and I'm gonna show you guys everything that I can. We're gonna go deep today, so let's jump in. Okay, so here we are in the project, and what you'll notice just immediately is uh, how big it is. There's a lot going on here. I actually bounced down the effects, like the sweeps and stuff, to one stem, so it actually was like 250 channels at one point, which is crazy. This is the extended mix on the right side and the radio edit is on the left side. And I really recommend this. What I always do is I make, usually I make the, the extended mix first and then I make the radio edit. I just copy the whole thing to the right. And that way, if I have a change I need to make to a particular channel in the mix, I just do it once. I don't have to jump to two projects. In this case, the radio edit was more important. I made the extended after. So, um, but anyway, that's why the project has two parts here. Let's focus on the radio edit here and we will jump in first to the kick. I'm gonna talk really fast in this tutorial because I have so much to show you guys. If I don't, we're gonna run out of time. So let's jump into this. It's a Maddox kick, kind of like a big room kick. You can see the tail on this kick is super long. And if I extend this out, it's even longer. So what I did on this kick, if we listen to it on its own with no LFO tool, you can hear that really, really long tail. This LFO tool, I just take it and cut it off so it's a bit more of a normal type of kick. Just take all that tail out. And then I have this top kick here. Uh, we'll solo that. So without the top kick, the Maddox kick is fine, but the top kick just adds more here. I'll layer those together. You can hear it just slices through more. So I just added that on there. So that's the kick and let's take a look at the basses. So in this track, I didn't want to go for a rumble kick, like a drum code style techno low end. I wanted it to be techno inspired, but I didn't want to use that kind of like techno style rumble bass or rumble kick. I wanted it to, to be a bit more futuristic. So uh, I wanted to get this kind of like cyberpunk type of essence into there. So I actually did this eighth note kind of recurring pattern with some kind of like detuned weird synth shots, but this is the main low kind of sub bass. There's a lot of grit on this sound. Check it out. You know, that's, that's, I love that sound. Uh, so it's a, it's a bass shot that I'm just doing eighth notes on super EQ'd, just really, really getting in to just catch that fundamental there. And then just, saturating the hell out of it. So running it through this Saturn on this tape smash preset, just modified a little bit, really just rocking that, that saturation there and just have some shaper box on there. So that's the main kind of gritty bass. And then I just have an, a number of bass shots and, and bass synths that are just running eighth notes. So we have this one that really just adds harmonics. We have this one. I love that that adds the the kind of sour, futuristic kind of detuned essence to that. And funny enough, all right, I have it again. It's the same exact thing. I accidentally duplicated it at one point and I didn't know that I did. And then uh, I just kept making the track and I mix as I go. And then I really liked the way it sounded. And then I was like, I was afraid to delete one because I didn't want to have to re volume balance everything. So I was like, oh, I'll just leave it there because I like the way it sounded with two of them. There's no difference. It's just louder and I didn't want to disrupt the volume balance. So there's just both, there's just two of these. Big part of this is uh, this disperser. I'm, 
it does add a little bit. This pinch really helps accentuate that C that C sharp, and it gives it it just leans into that kind of detuned essence. Uh, not much going on there. So that's the bass together with the kick. We get that kind of like driving techy kind of feel. We have a vibe going already right there, just right off the bat. So let me show you these drop fillers. So these just add more information to the drop. So we have this Maddox kind of gallop bass right here. I don't know if you guys can hear that. It's really quiet and subtle, but it adds to that low mid. And you see, I really, really just took a lot of the information out without the EQ. It has a lot of weight, but I just really wanted to constrain it into the low mids. See right there, it's very subtle. Got some more EQ on here. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, there's a little spike right there I wanted to get out. Probably was just pushing and pulling that fundamental to make it sound right. And then... Uh, more EQ. Yeah, so I'm really darkening this up. I really just wanted to constrain it on the low mids. Okay, and then we have this drop filler as well. Now this one, if I don't have the EQ on, it's really loud, really bright. So I really needed to, again, constrain that, just getting the frequencies I want to fill this drop out. Just right there, just adds just enough. And then, okay, so this feedback right here, this is something that I do a lot. What this is, is a part of the vocal. So it's the weekend's vocal ran it through an H delay. Okay. And I cranked the feedback over a hundred. And so I let a feedback loop begin to emerge. So I just press play on the vocal and let the feedback just go. So I had a feedback loop after about a minute, a steady feedback loop that I then resampled. So I just resampled a feedback loop and it gave it this kind of like, here, just listen to it. kind of this like smoky kind of ghost like atmosphere and i put this spectral blur device on which just it's kind of, it's a form of reverb kind of and it just adds to that effect and you guys can hear it just uh it's kind of creepy kind of eerie right it just fills the drop out but what i love doing is using the dna of another aspect of the tra of the track so i took the vocal created a feedback loop out of that vocal and made that into a totally like atmospheric drop filler. And I think doing that, taking one thing and repurposing it, using that one aspect of the track in a different way, but it's generated from a different aspect of the track that provides cohesion. It creates a more of a, of a, I don't know, kind of concrete world that where a lot of the same things are generated from the same assets. And so you get this cohesion. It plays into the theme a little bit more. It makes the track feel just more, um, I don't know, kind of everything just gels together better when you, when you do that. So I do it a lot. So there's the drop fillers, the bass and the kick. That's where we are so far. We have these, these and the bass. So together, hear those drop fillers especially that feedback loop just adding that kind of like eerie essence then we get into the drum bus here so uh let's take a listen to this hi-hats you can hear it's that techno vibe 16th notes with with those hats you'll see here uh on these hats you see tdlsp that is actually a sample pack I made myself of my track Turbulence. I really liked the drums. I worked really hard on the drum bus and Turbulence. So when the track was done, I bounced out all of the individual drum sounds because I loved the way they were mixed. They work for my sound. They work for the way that I produce techno. I spent a lot of time on them. So I bounced out my own sample pack of my own drums and I use it whenever I'm making techno now. I use a lot of the, the Turbulence stuff. So we have, uh, let's take a listen to what we have here. We have this little topper. Let's see. Yeah, just a 16th note hat. We have this. Yeah, another 16th note hat. And then we have uh, this hat right here. It's like an open offbeat hat that I liked. I like the, the texture of that. I've got a ride right here. Let's take a listen to this. Okay, this kind of ride really important for techno, especially like the techno that I'm hearing in 2023, 
kind of has this white noise kind of like kind of sweepy it kind of has this sweep sound to it it's kind of like this white noise kind of essence getting that white noise kind of hat into the drum bus is really important for techno especially on the offbeat hat you want to give it some you want to give it some some weight and some air and then i have this ride it's more of like a what i call like kind of that industrial type of hi-hat what what you do take a ride cut it short like this so it's just the length of like a hi-hat and I think I even, yeah, I even trim it. So I'm using the LFO tool to just shape exactly how I want that tail to be. But the secret to getting that kind of like metallic industrial sound on these rides and turn them into hi-hats is to boost the high mids right here around that 3K area. That's actually a harsh area. It's often associated with kind of like ear piercing harshness. But when you want to create that kind of metallic industrial style ride hat thing for, for techno actually want to accentuate that area and bring out that harshness. It's essentially a harsh ride or a harsh hat. That's kind of the point. So really boost uh, those, those high mids right around that three K area quite a bit to bring out that harshness and you get that really metallic sound. Without that, it just doesn't hit the same. That has so much weight to it in, in the drum bus. Really, really helps drive. So there's that. Okay, let's talk about the one shots. Uh, I have these fills, just like four snares. This is from Turbulence as well. Right? Reverse cymbal. Let's see, I have a clap roll here. Cool. Let's talk about the one shots. I guess we could talk about the reverb that I have on that. What do I have? Oh, it's being sent to a bus. So here on this bus, or a, not, not a bus, but a return channel, sending a lot of stuff to this return channel. We're gonna talk about the one shots in a second. So in my turbulence walkthrough on my YouTube channel, I talked about how I like to send things to a six and a half second decay time reverb. I guess I'm evolving. I'm like coming, going from like Charmander to Charizard um, because now my decay time is at like 12 and a half seconds. So I guess I'm just exponentially doubling, but I've been digging the 12 and a half seconds now. So I'm, I'm really getting a lot of depth, a lot of atmosphere uh, with using that as a return channel that I send a lot of things to. If we look at these one shots, they are all being sent right here to that same 12.3 second a lot of them are being sent to that same 12.3 second reverb. So take a listen to these one shots. And that gives it all of that space. You can still hear that tail going. It gives it all of that space. And I think that's really important for techno because if you have a more minimalistic drop where you really just have a big kick and a more minimalistic bass, really just like a, like a rumble or like a really deep sub, and it's really just kick and sub, there's not as much in the highs and the mids that, that fill out the drop. There's not a lot of mid basses firing off. It's not like electro or house where you have more of a bass rhythm. It's really just a big kick and sub. And so what we have to do is we have to fill the mix with we have to fill that space with something. And so because we don't have as many one shot, we don't have as many bases, we don't have as many instruments, the instruments that are there, we really have to drench them in reverb, give them a lot of space, give them a lot of depth. So they fill that more sparse canvas that we're painting with just the kick and the sub that forms the foundation of the base of the track. So I really drench a lot of these one shots in reverb so that when we're in the track, they really fill the space. If we take a listen here. want that reverb to really fill that empty space that's that's left with not as much of the of, the, of these bass shots so that's that I have a, a few of those firing off here this one's cool too i liked this one you know if we look at a sound like that if i just unfreeze it here got some eq guess i wasn't doing much there i don't know why that's there got an ott you can see that's uh, kind of cranked right there i got a Sachs fattener Color, I guess I wanted all the way up. Another, uh, here we go. This EQ is doing something. Really wanted to accentuate that area. 
cool. I love that sound. That's great. Uh, big reverb here. So I've got the dry chain on this audio effect rack. That's just the dry sound with no reverb. Right. And then all the reverb sits on this chain. And I did something kind of crazy here. I, I did the reverb 12.3 seconds, but I, then I also put a tour of verb on there and that's 50% wet. So I've got this tour of verb, which is like 12 seconds of decay time on this tour of verb on the reverb. So I'm just getting super, super drenched. That's why it's so, that's just what I was saying. I wanted to fill that space with a super, super long decay uh, on that reverb, just a little bit of EQ and some kickstart on the reverb. So it doesn't crowd the mix out too much. If we keep going down here, yeah, let's talk about this pluck. So this is really, really nice. This is a nice mousy, kind of dead mousy pluck. Check this out. Really like the sound. Without the processing, it's still pretty good coming out of Serum. We can take a look at the sound here. Let's take a look. It's just a pluck I found. Saw pluck, some automation, some, some enveloping. So the essence is already there, that kind of dead mousy kind of pluck essence, just saw waves. But with the processing, it just adds so much more depth. And it also takes a little bit of the edge off the sound. You'll see like it's really a sharp, plucky, punchy sound. And I will actually need to take that back a little bit to fit it into the mix better. So here's with and without the processing. Here it kind of just takes some of the edge off and then also gives a lot of space and depth and delay and reverb. So got some some EQ, some OTT, got the depth at 23, uh, kickstart, and then Pro MB. I wanted to just punch down on uh, the highs as they're, as they're plucking through. You see it's kind of just managing that. Uh, got this thermal. I love this distortion unit. It's great. I just picked presets and then adjust the dry wet for the most part. Liked the way this sounded on here. Uh, got some distortion. This DST3, really good distortion unit. Kind of similar to Saturn, but a bit more aggressive. I really like it. Even if you just pop it on, the default sounds good. Change some of the parameters here. It's, it's very simple. Sounds good. You can choose a distortion type. Uh, without those two distortions on there, here it really pushes that sound i mean it's adding some volume but it pushes the sound in general you can really distort these types of sounds uh some eq just rounding things off uh, making it a little bit brighter uh this bx control here okay mono making the lows uh at like 162 and then the stereo width so you'll see here i'm actually taking the stereo width in a little bit so in my tracks I like to leave things really wide i let i let the entire sound stage really just rock and you know, I, I let things be really, really wide in my tracks. And so oftentimes I have to con I have to pull things in. So instead of trying to seek wideness, I'm usually just letting things go. And then I pull things in so that not everything is wide because if everything's wide, you know, nothing's wide. So I had to pull some things in to just utilize the sound stage a bit better. So just pulled this in on the width a little bit. And then this right here, this glue compressor, really important for a, for a stabby kind of plucky sound like this. It can often especially when it's in the context of a groove, like of a drop, like we have here, it can poke out of the mix a little bit like a sore thumb. So what I do on plucky sounds like these, this kind of plucky rhythms is I go fast attack, fast release, uh, you know, medium ratio with no makeup gain. So because of the fast attack and the fast release, you'll see as I play this, the needle is just catching the peaks. It's just catching the transient of each of those plucks and just kind of, just kind of reining it in without it. You can't, it's, it's very subtle, but for mixing purposes, I just don't want that poking out too much, right? I want to constrain the, the transient of that a little bit. So, so I really, I do that all the time. Whenever I have plucks like this, some more EQ and then Okay, so the delay and reverb stack, I showed you guys this in my turbulence walkthrough. So we have our dry chain, I'll play this. That's dry, no delay, no reverb. I have a tour of verb here. Okay. And by the way, I almost always use Lex Cathedral, just the default preset on tour of verb. I often don't change the preset. I just use the default and then change the parameters. 
because it sounds really good out the box. And then I just changed some of the diffusion, the attenuation uh, on both the late and the early. I just changed some of these parameters, some of the base cut, size, crosstalk. And, you know, that's really all the presets are anyway. So, but I don't, I don't really mess with the presets. Um, so I got some Tora Verb. I have some Arts Acoustic on a different return. So we're just layering two different reverbs in. Love this preset. Really, really nice and diffuse, uh, only wet because it's on return channel. And then we have our good old Echo Boy. I always use ping pong. I can't, honestly, I can't think of a track in the last five years where I use anything other than a ping pong. I just, I always use ping pong delays. I just think they sound best. Echo Boy's nice. Um, yeah, just went with this and it gives it that kind of bounce. So all together, this sound has that depth, really liked it, sits in the mix really nicely. Love it, just gives it some drive, keeps the groove going. We're just gonna go down vertically. We'll just go down vertically all this stuff. So we have this, uh, this right here, it's another feedback tail, feedback loop. This one's crazy too. I really, uh, we really went in on this. So you can hear it's just a feedback loop, but if I take the auto filter off, Super feedback. I have this washing device on here too. It just, I don't know, it just adds a little bit more character to it, I thought. But yeah, it's just a feedback tail. Again, it's the vocal. I just let it really, really develop a, a gnarly feedback loop and then just resampled that. And um, yeah, I just use that almost like a buildup. So I use it to create tension in transitions and build parts of the track. So if we listen here. And again, it just creates that kind of haunting, sinister, kind of just like foggy, creepy vibe because it's like a feedback tale. And that was the theme that we wanted to go for on the track. I mean, me and me and Apollo talked about how we wanted to approach the mood of this. And we have so many things that kind of evoke that sort of creepy, eerie vibe. And feedback tales are great with that. If we listen to this, use it for uh, the transition to the break. I use it in the break to create tension toward the trap drop. It's everywhere. I love that thing. So we have that. All right, let's talk about the vocals. It's a big one. So funny, really funny thing about the vocals. Obviously this is a weekend in 21 Savage track. I don't have the studio acapella to this. And what's, what's crazy is I tried to run it through RX. I tried to run it through lala.ai. And I thought I, I couldn't extract like a really clean acapella. Like it was just okay. It was serviceable. It was all right, but it wasn't working that well. I went on YouTube. I found, I typed in weekend creeping acapella. I found an acapella that like someone else had, had used RX on and just, it was not a studio acapella. It was another rip. So somebody had ripped the acapella out, but they did a pretty good job. And I just went to like a YouTube to MP3 conversion website punched in the link to that YouTube video and downloaded the MP3. So this is by far not a high quality recording. And the challenge that, that Greg and I had that we really wanted to make sure we, we did was that even though it was super low quality YouTube rip, double YouTube rip, you know, acapella, we wanted it to sound professional. So we actually didn't use the 21 Savage verse other than as like an accessory because his verse just wasn't clean on the, on the acapella, but the weekend's verse was decent. I ran the whole thing through RX again and tried my best to really like forensic audio level of cleanup on this YouTube to MP3 rip, which is crazy for a bootleg, but I just really liked, I loved this track. I wanted to do that. So I cleaned this up and we got it sounding pretty good. And then we processed all of these vocals so much. I'll show you everything we did. We just wanted it to sound super, super high quality. We wanted it to sound like it was an, an official remix, not a bootleg, right? We wanted to do that. So let's run through this. We have the main vocal here. Take it anymore. And if you creep it, please don't let it show. So on this, we have uh, just a little bit of EQ, nothing crazy there. I don't know why why I even did that, but what I always do on my vocals, okay, and this is something I've shown in, in some other tutorials now, 
I have an audio effect rack with an eighth note delay. Okay, so it's eighth delay, ping pong, eighth note dotted actually. Running that through a little saturation on this pedal, adjust the width, compress this delay signal, side chain it to the drive so it gets out of the way when he speaks. But I have the dotted eighth note. And you can hear that saturation coming from the pedal. It just gives it some more characters and gives it some more overdrive type effect. Then I have a uh, half note delay. And the filters are different and the feedback is different. Okay. And on, yeah, so on this one, it just kind of bounces around even a little bit more. I think the pedal has a little bit less. Yeah, so that on the, on the dotted eighth, the pedal's just more saturated. Half note, just less saturated. Um, and then we have the dry here, which has no delay on it. If you're All of that, the dry, the half note, and the dotted eighth, that flows into an audio effect rack that has the dry on it. If you're and it has a long reverb. So the delays and the dry are flowing into this audio effect rack that then has a return channel for a reverb and a dry. So the dry has a pathway through where it's just a totally dry vocal so we can really hear the lyrics. But then we have all of the effects, the delays and the reverbs being blended in. So we have this long reverb here, like six seconds long. And all of these effects are always side chained to the dry so they don't uh, blur the vocal out or like wash the vocal out. Uh, EQ that reverb just to keep it constrained. Then I can press the whole thing with an LA-2A. So just tapping a few dB here just to push the reverb, push the delay, push the vocal in your face a little bit more. Just give it some squeeze because when you rip something from YouTube like this, you're not going to get, you're going to lose, you're going to have these weird volume imbalances and everything. So the, the LA-2A just giving a squeeze really helps. Okay, let's listen to the whole thing here. You can see I'm just I'm just squeezing the whole thing. It also brings, like I said, the, the delay and reverb tails out, and I really wanted to bring those out. You can still hear them kind of going now, so that really helped with the theme of the track. That really spacey, kind of creepy theme. I use that as a build-up, and I have a lot of reverb on it. So that's just repeating the I have a Tora verb on there, uh, and then I have another audio effect rack with a, re a return channel with another reverb, and this reverb is the 12.3 seconds. So one thing that's really important, guys, is if you're gonna have a lot of different reverb instances, if you're not gonna use return channels a lot, then they all need to be the same decay time. So all my Tora is always 11.58, and then all my, like this reverb is always 12.3. I, I guess I should actually put them the same, but um, they all need to be similar so that you don't have too many distinct reverb lengths going on in your track. So every time you see this reverb for the most part, a lot of them are 12.3 seconds. On the tour verbs, they're all 11.58. So we're always talking about that 12 second decay time so everything feels consistent. But I used this rep repetition of the I like a uh, build up a lot. So we check this Hello. out. And that just helps give some, some tension to the build and drop into the track. Um, sounds really cool in the track. No. Really helps that drop pop off. We also have this O hit, check this out. So let's listen to it on its own. Sounds really cool. It's like a fill. It's almost like a like some type of growl. Okay, what it is, it's actually 21 Savage. And I got to shout out our buddy Pablo Artigas for this. He had this idea when I was streaming the creation of this track early, early on. There's a part in 21 Savage's verse right before he starts his verse where he goes like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, check this out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Cool. So you hear that in like that's 21 Savage. Pablo was on stream and he was like, what happened if, what would happen if you like pitch that down an octave and then like put a bunch of reverb on it or did something like that to make it like into, into some effect. And that's exactly what I did. So we have, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I pitched it down and used it throughout the track as a fill. So if we go right here, we have this O hit on this, on this chain. This one, I just really uh, saturated a lot and we, I use that as a fill throughout the drop and throughout the track. So right here at the beginning of the drop, we have 
I guess that's the build. Hold on, let's go back. We have it again. Project has so many channels. Okay, let's, yeah, let's look here. So we have right here. Right, so that sounds almost like a synth fill or like a growl, right? So what it is, we have this little Ultra Boy pitching and formatting, shifting down 12. So if I uh, take that off, that's 21 Savage saying, whoa, but he's pitched down. I EQ'd it, just constrain on the mids there. OTT, pretty deep. And then the saturation knob is like really going hard. It makes his vocal into that kind of growly, synthy, uh, almost bassy like thing. If I take the saturation knob off, that's cool. But with it on, it really adds that grit and it makes it sound like a fill. And then we have, again, the 12.3 second reverb audio effect rack with the dry and then just um, some, some side chain and EQ. So I thought that was really cool, really good idea. Shout out to Pablo for that one to use that as like a drop fill. And that with that reverb, it really, again, fills that space going into the drop. And then once we're in the drop, we just repeat some ad libs. So me and Greg, we were listening to the whole track together on Zoom, like listening to the parts of, of the lyrics and like, okay, what would be a good thing to use as like an ad lib or repeat or like add swag to the track. So we have this here, keep it on that. Right. And that just, uh, it's almost, almost like an accessory. So it's just got a lot of delay, same chain, same reverb, just EQ differently. So it's more, it's a little darker, just sits behind the mix a little bit more. And then we go to, I don't want to know. Same as the intro, all that delay and reverb goes back to here. Keep it on the, oh, right? So those just alternate like a call and response. And then every part that we get to like a bit of a transition. So the halfway point of the drop, I repeat the I, 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 I right here. Oh, baby, I don't wanna know. So that really adds a lot of it really, we really wanted to flip the vocal and use it in as many ways as we could use these ad libs, add just so much. We didn't just want to slap the vocal in. We wanted to really flip this track into something different. I mean, you can't take an R and B song and turn it into techno, um, without flipping it. So we wanted to go hardcore with that. We also use this and I think I, yeah, we, we had to really go hard on this one. As I recall, yeah, we have two long reverbs here. And then I OTT'd the delays and the reverbs to bring it out even more. So that's the same basic chain, but we have a reverb and then we have two more reverbs. So I'm just really going hard. Same with this one. That's just adding all of that depth and reverb and atmosphere and space that we talked about with the theme of this track, which is just nocturnal, kind of echoey, kind of foggy, right? All those little details really add up to bring you into the world of the track. And I think it's really, really important. We spent a lot of time on that. Um, and then we did the 21 Savage part. So, cause we had, we couldn't leave him out, right? He's in the track. He adds so much to the original track. Um, what we did is we actually listened through the whole 21 verse and we had to find a part that like we listened to it line by line and we we're like, okay, which is, the, what's the best line that we can use or part that we can use. And we listened to the whole verse. This is the part that we came up with. It's this uh, fashion Nova model. I'll put you on the run runway part. Fashion Nova model. I'll put you on the runway. And it just goes left and right. Fashion Nova model. I'll put so you right. on the runway. And then left. Fashion Nova model. I'll put you on the runway. And then when it gets, when it gets like the end of every, I guess, eight bars, it says, uh, I put you in Eliante. You on the runway. I'm the one to put you in Eliante. Fashion over my right. And then that hits the center. So that just adds to the, to the groove of the track even more, right? It just develops that dropout. It just adds some, some fun to the track as well. And we, like I said, we had to put 21 in here. Like he's, he's a big part of this track. So what's interesting is I think the way that this worked out, I really wanted to, yeah, if we look here, it's, it's interesting how we did this, but, um, we have the dry right here in this group. So this is just the dry vocal. Fashion over my, I put you on the runway. 
there's just reverb there. The delay, I actually, we wanted to, to uh, process separately. We had to be very precise with this. So I have the delays on a separate group and I turn, you see it's only the half note delay, the dry chain and the eighth note chain are off. It's just the half note. And I wanted to pro, I needed to process in, this and mix this a little bit differently. And whenever I had the ping pong delays, by the way, I always change, I always put a utility on and I decide how wide I want it to be. You can't have all the ping pong delays in your track, especially me, I use a lot of ping pong delays. You can't have them all 100% wet. You have to, again, pull things in and utilize the sound stage by constraining things to different widths so that you're not just stacking everything to the sides, right? So this one is, is quite narrow. That's why, you know, I just, I wanted to EQ and reverb and narrowize this uh, separate from the actual, um, from the dry on him. So yeah, we have that part. Let's, let's see what this part all sounds like together. <laughs> Yeah, just this white noise right here every time. Yeah, cool. Um, just gives it some vibe. Uh, Greg will talk about those parts. We have more drop fillers here. So some blurs, check this out. Again, name of the game, especially with this kind of vibe of techno that that you know that I've been producing in the last six or six or eight months. You gotta put a lot of drop fillers into bring that that essence that atmosphere in otherwise it just sounds it just doesn't have the depth it doesn't have the cinematic quality so we have this just hanging out back there uh just some some echo some auto filter not much there we have this i think this is just a reverb tail from the vocal that i repeated and put a spectral blur on and some echo Again, everything's in key. It's all just from the vocal itself. And what I'll do is I'll, again, just bounce out the vocal and everything's generated from the vocal. So it just brings a lot of cohesion. Let's check this out. Also from the vocal, it's part of a reverb tail that I just chopped up. Just, it's, it's just a chop. And then, yeah, I have this intensity plugin on here. I like this a lot. It brings out some detail. Pan man. Uh, yeah, so just add some reverb on there. Those blurs. More atmosphere. Have some more ambience here. This is from Maddox. I love that one, but you can't just take the sample and pop it in your project and call it a day. If you really want to go hard to bring depth and atmosphere and cinematic quality, you got to do more than that. So I have this delay on here. Uh, this is, you know, pretty high cranked at 40. And um, this is a reverse of that. So this is this part reversed and also with some delay and that intensity plugin. Uh, the intensity just brings out detail. And this whole thing is going through a spectral blur. Spectral blur, by the way, is a form of reverb. I like it a lot. It sounds really, again, kind of ghost-like, nocturnal, really blurry, really diffuse. Uh, just an EQ. Uh, on here is uh, a pull tech boosting the highs a little bit and then going into, I'm assuming, oh, this is different. I have a shimmer verb here. I like this Hell's Gate preset, sounds really good. And then I guess I have another shimmer verb probably for the break, I'm gonna guess. Yeah, in the break, I have another shimmer verb. So I have two shimmer verbs that really just make this in the breakdown super, super reverb. Pulling up again. And it's just like waves. It's like waves of atmosphere that, that wash over this break. So we have that. Everything's in key uh, to C sharp. So I probably just repitched it from wherever it was. And so we have a lot of depth and atmosphere sitting behind what is honestly a pretty basic drop. It's really, if we talk about the bass, it's there's not really a bass line. It's just eighth notes, right? So that's why I had to go so hard with the rest of this stuff. Okay. Um, Let's jump into the break. I'm going to turn this over at this point to Greg. He's going to talk about some of the stuff that he did outside of our Zoom session to on his end that we reincorporated into the project to put some more vibe into the breakdown. And we'll jump right back here in a minute. 
Yo, what is up? It's your boy, Apollo Nash. And in this clip, I'm going to be showing you what went into some of the melodic elements of the breakdown for our bootleg for Creepin'. We really wanted to capture some of the dark, sinister, moody elements that were spread across the different albums like Dawn FM and even After Hours from the weekend. I think we pulled it off quite well. So without further ado, let's jump right in. All right. So in terms of the breakdown, I wanted to have something start that kind of helped to create this kind of dark, ominous, anxiety inducing um, vibe and atmosphere. And I went with this Selena emulation from Arturia with this breaking glass preset kind of serves as like the main strings that play all throughout the actual breakdown. Then we have an RC20 to add some noise and some wobble and some distortion to the strings with a built-in filter to cut off pretty much most of the sub frequencies as well as the highs. And then we have a Valhalla Shimmer to add some reverb at 57% mix and with the dark color mode. Then we have an EQ to actually do some more cutting on the low end. So everything below 140 was cut away and then another high cut to get rid of everything above 2.9 to 3 kilohertz. And uh, I started noticing this weird frequency that I was playing uh, with the sound, so I kind of got rid of that, just notched it out. And you have something that sounds like this. As you can see, it kind of creates this kind of dark, anxiety-inducing tone and atmosphere to the start of the break. So moving on to the pads, there's two things happening here. So first, both of these layers are playing the main chord progression of the actual song and the first layer can, is is essentially my favorite preset from spire it's this pad hamilton preset that i found from one of my banks and it really helps to add that retro 80s synth wave sound and why i always love to go for in some of my melodic tracks and the second layer here is also from selena again it adds this extra crunchy kind of texture to the pads is this air string preset that we found so it sounds like this it's a little hollow a little bit airy but there's also that crunch on the top layer and so combined it sounds like this in terms of the actual bus that we're surrounding these two there's a pro MB to kind of get some additional control over the lows as well as the low mids. So everything below 790 hertz is pretty much just compressed a little bit to kind of glue that section. And we have an overall glue compressor to kind of push the pads back in the mix. And it also helps to kind of glue both of those pads together. So with all of those, I'm like this. Not that much gain reduction on the compressor here, but is really glue the two layers together and to kind of push the sound back and mix a little bit. So next up we have the bass one shots that you're hearing pretty much throughout the entire breakdown and the preset that we used here is the soul <laughs> orgasm preset from one of the banks that I have and in terms of the post processing I used the Valhalla Shimmer to add some reverb as an insert and at 38% mix, as well as using the dark color mode here, we have an RC20 to add, again, some noise and some wobble and some distortion, and we roll off pretty much most of the top end on that sound. And we cut off all of the sub frequencies at below 82.5 hertz. And it sounds like this. It really helps to emphasize that dark mood that we really want to go for. Next up, we have more of a support lead layer here. So this actually plays along the main chord progression of the track, but it's actually playing a couple of notes to really emphasize some of the main notes from the chords. And this is actually using the Soul Orgasm uh, preset from one of the banks. Ends up playing as like a backing lead and and the actual bus. We not much is happening here. We just have an RC20 to just add some wobble and some distortion. And we use the built-in filter to kind of cut off the sub frequencies and a lot of the top end. And we have something that sounds like this. It's not supposed to be one of those layers that is 
in your face, but it definitely really helps to emphasize a lot of those main notes in the chord progression. All right, so I took those stems, put them in the track, we kept working on this, and what our next task was was the trap drop, which we had so much fun with. Initially, what we wanted to do, actually, Greg, Sam, he pulled out the original drums from the the p diddy and mario winans version like the bad boy version he pulled out the snare and the and the and the kick from that track and we tried to use that in like we wanted to use it in this break like we were like oh if we could do that be so sick but you know as we were working with it the mix was just the 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 samples are really old um and it was just hard to get it sounding really crisp and really tight and also the original track was at 98 and this is at 130 so Doing that same drum pattern at 1.30 felt like rushed. So we ended up scrapping that idea, but we really wanted to try and make it work. But what we ended up doing is just like this, this super trap nocturnal, almost like OVO like uh, drum pattern here. You would check it out right here. Had so much fun with this guys. You can see the golden eye right there because, all right, so we all know golden eye 007 on N64. The theme of that is almost like a meme, how good that theme is. And it has that one like melted snare sound and it's just, it reminded me of the golden eye theme. I was like, hell yeah, let's put that in there. I just called it golden eye. I love that. Um, but let's, let's walk through this trap part. So first we got the kick stack here. Got uh, um, the main thumpy kick here. These are all from trap samples, by the way. Just go on Splice, just rated Splice for all trap and hip hop sounds that we could find. So we have that that kick. We have this one. This is more of like, uh, it gives it that kind of like upper, upper mid knock, kind of like someone knocking on a door. If we look at the EQ here, it's just focused in on the high mids. So we get that kind of knock just so it knocks the mix a little bit better. I have another, this is actually a trance kick. Just filtered down. That actually has most of the sub of the kick. If you hear it has that tail. And then just a little bit of a top kick here. So subtle, but it's important. You know, it helps slice through. It's very percussive. We needed that kick to just balance right within the mix. So all together we get this kick. Got these kick rolls that add a lot, you gotta do that. Then we have this 808 here. Standard 808, uh, right here. And the biggest thing with this 808 was the saturation. Uh, how to really fine tune this, because without the saturation, it's really, really smooth and it would be hard to hear. It's too low, you'd be hard to hear on phones or laptop speakers. You see, that's really, really low and smooth. It's like a sine wave with the saturation though. punches through more, you have a bit more of those harmonics. Just had to tame those with an EQ. Let's look right here. Yeah, just really pushing and pulling this where I needed to, to accentuate this fundamental, but pull out the next fundamental. Wanted to, to pull that out, but accentuate the low one because the saturation can kind of accentuate different parts of the sound that weren't so audible before. Uh, side chaining to the kick, so that the kick and the 808 don't clash. And then I noticed the 808, you can see the volume of the 808 sloping down right there. I want it to be like really full, like a wall of 808. I didn't want it to fade away on the volume like that. So I just spanked it so hard with this compressor just to keep it totally consistent. Like I didn't want, I wanted it to be solid 808. I didn't want the volume to, to dip off like that. So I just really, really squeezed it. And then I just had one, there was two notes where the fundamental just hit a little too hard. Those two. But that fundamental, the low note, um, let's see if we can find it. The first note was fine though. If we look at the low fundamental, didn't want to dip that one out. So that one I wanted to leave, the other two I wanted to dip out, uh, and that was the 808. So with kick and 808 together. Okay, that's already a vibe, good. We have our golden eye. Love that. 
Oh, that's so nice. Okay, and then let's look at the snare. So, oh my God, we spent so much time on the snare. This, it sounds like one snare sample, right? It just sounds like, oh, just a trap snare. It took some time. Uh, so if we look at this, here's the snare. Right, and in the whole group, it sounds like this. And what this is, it's actually a bunch of layers and they're all processed really carefully to make it sound like one snare, even though it's actually a stack of five. So below that, I actually have this clap that just accentuates the tail, but ignore that. The actual snare layers are, here's the main one. This is the main layer. You can hear, I just uh, EQ'd to focus in on the mids. I wanted to give it that thump. This is, I think, this track is at C sharp and we tuned the snare to, I think a fifth of whatever the fifth of the C sharp scales. I think that's like, I want to say that's G sharp or whatever the fifth of the C sharp scale is. We tuned these snares to that. Um, so we have this, this new gen stereoizer. It just makes things a little bit wider and you can do it on a frequency by frequency basis. So I really like that sausage fattener EQ. So that's the main snare but then it wasn't really slicing through enough. It didn't have enough highs on it. So I added a couple different character and texture layers that really had more slice. So I have this, you can hear that's really, really high end focused, really white noisy. We have this kind of like a wood block, another really, really high snare with a little bit of body. And then that's actually tuned to C sharp. Okay. So we have C sharp and the fifth here. So, Together we have the whole thing. And this is really an important lesson here when you have a stack of sounds that are comprising something like that, that's that you want to sound like one sound. Like if I have five snare layers here, but I want them to sound like one snare group processing on that group, that stack of, of layers is incredibly important because if they're not all sucked into the same processing chain and have very similar transient shape, have very similar uh, EQ. If essentially when we're gluing things together, when we're, when we're group processing a stack that we want to sound very cohesive, like one sample, we have to take this group of separate samples and give them a lot in common. And by giving them a lot in common, by flowing them all through the same processing, we give them more characteristics and more characteristics in common so that they sound more cohesive and they sound like they're meant to be together or like one sound. So let's just start off right here. Off the bat, we have 1176 compressor. It says it's at one on the 1176. That's actually the slowest attack. So I wanted slow attack to let the transient through. And whenever you're using a compressor, especially on a group or you're compressing like, you know, a, a stack of, of sounds like this or samples like this for like a snare, really, really important to use a scope after the compressor, because especially with an analog model compressor like this, there's not a visual, there's not a visual window here. And so I have to use the scope to make sure that I'm getting the result out of the compressor that I want. So let's dial in this scope so I can show you guys what we're talking about here. Let me just loop one snare. We'll just loop something like that. Okay. See if I can pull this back a little bit, actually. Mm, hold on, guys. Try to do this properly. Okay, that's fine. So now you can see it stays right there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the compressor off and then back on and look at the difference in the waveform of, this is the whole stack of snares. Look at the difference in the waveform. Compressor off and on. Off and on. So what you'll see is when I put the 1176 on, it really accentuates and sharpens up the transient. It makes that snare really sharp, really punchy. And again, it makes all of the snares sound more cohesive because they all get shaped into that transient. So all of those five different samples that have disparate or distinct transients, 
now all get sucked into the same transient shape and that's why they sound really cohesive. So that's really important to do. Use a scope for your, your after your compressors, make sure your ears and your eyes are telling you what you want to see or hear. We have split EQ. This EQ EQs the tail and the transient separately. So I want to, wanted to brighten up the transient and I didn't want the tail to have a lot of highs. I wanted it to be like really bright and then I wanted the tail to be really dark and tonal. So I accentuated the fundamental of the tail, but I took out the highs of the tail and then I brightened the transient. So did that with the split EQ, did some stereo spreading. Just wanted to really use the sound stage with the highs. I wanted those highs to like splash across the mix. You can see like boom right there. And then we have just some EQ. I don't know why I did this. I could have done this in three nodes, but I was lost in the sauce. You know how it goes. All right. And then we have a Torah verb and the dry chain. And then at the end of all that, we have a Mog EQ, which is really just a brightening EQ. It's just a high shelf boost at 5K, 4 dB, sounds really good, adds a lot of high air onto things. And that is, that is essentially our trap section. Loved working on that. And the vocal in this section, we had to go hard on because the recording in this section for the vocal just was really not clean. The YouTube, the, the two time YouTube rip just did not, did not sound good for this section. So we had to be a bit more involved with this. So right off the bat, if we listen to this vocal, it's really because we have that background vocal. So I had to compress this just to bring out that backing vocal. Squeeze the whole thing. I needed to widen it a little bit. So we just put some CLA vocal on there. Um, some EQ had to go really, yeah, I had to really, we had to go crazy with this EQ because the recording was so bad from the YouTube rip that we had to just be, we had to like notch out harsh stuff. We had to accentuate different frequencies to make it sound more natural. Actually, um, it was getting a little sharp after that. So just a little bit of, uh, uh just taming the highs there. de -esser, whenever you are compressing a vocal, whenever you're, you're really pushing a vocal. So you have us compressing that like five six dB, really squeezing that. You're going to bring out the harshness. And then if I EQ it that much, I mean, look, I was going crazy on the EQ. Um, that harshness is just going to build up. And so, you know, just make sure you're DSing. Just catching some of the, tr the harsh stuff on, on some of those, those words like F's and T's. Then we have our same chain, eighth note, half note, reverb, boom. So we have that. And then we used this part as well, almost like a pad. It's from the original. Had to go kind of crazy on this EQ as well, just to make it fit into the mix better. So again, I don't know why I do that, do it this way. I get lost in the sauce, <laughs> but without it, it's a lot heavier. I wanted it to feel more like a pad, just sit, sit lightly in the mix. And there was some harsh stuff. There's some fundamentals. I don't know why I go this crazy. Uh, I would not follow my lead on that. I, you could, I could have done that more simply. That's all Greg stuff that he chatted about. We got some strings down here. Let's take a look. Just some Omnisphere, I think. Yeah, that's just uh, Ableton. And then we have Omnisphere strings here. Just Adagio strings. Really added a lot. Okay. And then just to show you guys the last part here, I know I've been talking for some time, just wanted to go hard, wanted to show you guys everything. Let's talk about the cinematic section. So here is one of my favorite sections of the track here. I'll just play the whole thing right here. This is the part where we went hard on the cinematic Sinister, creepy, eerie, dawn FM, after hours, late night, nocturnal, 3 a.m. vibe. That's why it's called the 3 a.m. in New York remix, because of this part. And we went we went hard. I mean, we really wanted to play into that cinematic vibe. So we got a bunch of Foley video game sounds. Let's check this out. So we have 
We have this sound right here, which I don't have time today to show you why it's two channels, but maybe another time. So that's a, actually a video game sound. And then we have this metallic junk rattling around just with some soothe on it and some delay. It was really, really metallic. So I had to soothe it out. Um, then we have this cinematic loop. And this, yeah, this is just as it comes. I think I just EQ'd a little bit. Yeah. And then from Omnisphere, we have some noise scapes or some soundscapes. So we have this is called Forbidden. EQ'd a little bit, put a shimmer verb on it. I love this Hell's Gate preset from Shimmer Verb. And then Big Torah Verb, 50% wet with the 11.8 second decay time. So it's just double reverbed with the shimmer before. And I have this one here, same setup, same reverbs, just a different Omnisphere preset. Nautilus Caves, kind of creepy, kind of eerie. Wanted to play into that theme. And so, okay, and then that, this whole chain, by the way, of the Foley and the, like the metal sounds, also running through the shimmer verb and the Torah verb, okay? And so, with that section where it's all creepy and eerie, we thought that was a fun part to put the the 21 Savage woes, like he's reacting to it almost. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just, just fun, just cool, right? We have the vocal come back in right here. With all the delay and the reverb and then on top of all that cinematic Foley video game stuff, we have all of these effects as well that just play into the theme even more. War horns. We have the zombies. All that's that's underneath all of the other cinematic stuff. So this part goes really, really hard. Then we go into the buildup and I'll just quickly show you guys that. So we have all the standard buildup stuff. We let all of that, a lot of that cinematic stuff keep rocking out while we just repeat the 21 Savage line about here. He's like, if you're creeping, just don't let me find out. Right. It's like right here. Don't let me find out. Yeah, excuse my singing. <laughs> if you're creeping, just don't let me find out. Let me find right. Okay, cool. So. We have the dry right here. Well, it's not dry. I think it has a bunch of reverb on it. Let's see. If you're creeping, just don't let me find out. Okay, okay yes, yeah, so there's a bunch of reverb, but then I have the delay on a separate channel. And this one is, if, you know, if I unfreeze this, we can show you how we did this. So this one is H delay. Feedback is cranked 100% wet. So that's why it sits below. So when he says it, the dry, is where he says it and then the this one below is where only the delay is generated because it's 100 wet so together he echoes after he says let it me find out girl. let me find out let me find right. out but, but let me find just out. the bottom part is just the delay cool so what you'll see is that we uh i'm actually gonna refreeze that so it doesn't keep going um what you'll see is that we automated the defeat the feedback of the h delay to increase over the course of the build. So it just, it bounces left and right. It starts to repeat, just don't let me find out, just don't let me find out, but it starts to intensify and build up with the build up. But then just to rein that in and control it, even though it is intensifying, we took the volume of the channel and we just turned it down until he repeated the line at lesser and lesser degrees of turning him down. And so it just, it does intensify as he repeats it more frequently, it intensifies more and more. And then when we get right to the drop, let's see, let's just solo this whole thing. And yeah, then we drop in. So we, we liked that pre-drop line and you'll see, I have this EQ that only turns on for the last time he says, get a hotel and never bring him to the house. So, I wanted it to sound like he was saying it through like a radio or like a bullhorn or something like that to like, I don't know, just make it sound cooler in the drop or right before the drop. So this EQ, I really had to like push and pull all these different frequencies to make it sound like kind of like he's coming through a bullhorn, like a walkie talkie almost. 
um, but it's not on until the pre-drop. So if I play it without that EQ, he's like heavier and more in your face. Get a hotel, never bring him to the house. Oh, but with it, get a hotel, never bring him to the house. Oh, he's just constrained. There's a bit more boxy. That was kind of the point. Um, and then the last thing, this is cool too. Another one of those uses of using repurposing the vocal as a drop filler. Um, he says, just repeated that. It repeats the whole drop. It just sits behind the mix the whole drop. So if we play that, You'll, you probably you might not hear it, but it does fill out the drop a little bit. Get a hotel, never bring to the house. Again, just more ways to add cohesion to the track. In my Turbulence walkthrough, we go through the plucks. I use the same one from Turbulence, plus just one more layer. You guys can check that out. I will put it somewhere on the screen here, probably around here and learn more about those leads. But hope you guys learned something from this. I know it's been long, but I really wanted to go deep in this one and show you guys everything about this crazy remix. If you have any questions, put them down below. I'll be happy to chat about this remix with you, more production stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed the track. Go check out the our, our actual remix. I'll link that in the description below. Let us know what you think, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hotel, never bring them to the house,